Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I wanted to show you my teapot that I got at a garage sale for $5. Now I've shown it before, but Mr. Rain took it and did something to it and now it looks like a completely different teapot. So here is this teapot. If you saw my other videos where I was making tea or and all that, um, you would have noticed it was very, it had a nice patina on it. It was very, very rustic looking and I did like it that way. But what happened was he decided to scrub it up for me because I was going to scrub it up anyway. And as he got to scrubbing, we got to seeing some things on here, some markings that were rather interesting, which then led him to polish it completely up. Now, I knew this was silver when I saw it at a garage sale, and that's why, and I was pretty sure it, was, it wasn't silver plated, that it was silver by the weight and feel of it, um, and just by the look of it. And there's no wear spots anywhere um, to show, you know, the plating wearing off. Well, if you look right here, and I'm not sure, there we go. That light should show that right there. See, that's United States Navy. And so when we saw that, that got me kind of excited. And I, it made me um, be able to narrow this down a little further because before all I could read was that was at the bottom and that this was International Silver was the was the company name and I couldn't find this exact teapot anywhere but it was I figured it was made for a hotel but I had pretty much narrowed it down to like the 30s and 40s and which was pretty cool but this particular particular uh, teapot Though I can't find another one exactly like this, this one was made for the United States Navy and it was used in the captain's mess on the ships and um, at further research proved that this one was actually made in 1941 to be exact because the, there's actually a date on the bottom, a date box down there. And it does have a number, and I'm gonna read you this number. This would be like the part number. It is 01100. And I'm trying to look that up to see if I can find out any more information on that. It, it would be really cool if we could find out exactly even uh, if this was actually on a ship and which ship it was on. That would be pretty great to find out. Um, but it just, I'm even, I almost started crying when I realized <laughs> what I had here. Um, other pieces that went with this set, I was able to find the matching pieces like the creamer and the sugar. Those pieces go for 200 to $300 each. The cheapest one I could find was pretty beat up and it was only silver plated and it was like $45 um, where this is actually silver. So uh, anyway, I just thought it was very cool and I wanted to share that with you that um, I was really loving this teapot to begin with and I've been using it for a couple years but then after we polished it up and we were able to see this that was you couldn't see it at all until now um, and then narrow it down further uh, to, to an exact date and where where it was used it wasn't used in a hotel like I thought it was actually used on a naval ship so very cool the thing about that number I was calling it a part number because that's what it was called on another web page but I really think it's more of like a serial or identification number that could narrow it down further to where it, this actually exactly came from um, and I don't know if anyone out there can help with that if you have any ideas if maybe you're a little bit better at researching antique items and uh, maybe even tell me a good, I did found, find some good web pages that gave a lot of great information about these, but maybe there's some more out there that I've missed. And if you know about those, go ahead and share them in comments below. I would, I would really like to research it more because I love, I love finding antique items at garage sales and putting them to use, but also having them as a conversation piece because, um, they're just cool and then knowing exactly where they came from. Such as, I've shown this in previous videos, one of my favorite garage sale finds was this. Now it might not look super special other than the fact that it's a lantern and it's tiny, but if you would have seen it in its original condition, um, the lens on it was red. So that tells you right away this was used in, at a railroad. 
um, cause they had the red, yellow, and the green lights, I believe, in these lanterns. And I think it was years ago I bought it and looked it up, but I only paid a dollar for this thing. And looking it up on eBay, they're selling for like 30 to $40 a piece. And this is the winged wheel lantern. Now I actually did have Mr. Rain, um, take the red off of this because I want this for daily use in my kitchen. It's the perfect size and everything. And so that was the only reason we changed the appearance. Otherwise I typically like keeping things in the original form, but I love the size of the lantern and knowing, you know, a little bit of history about it. Uh, and you know, I only paid a dollar. So to me, $5 for this silver <laughs> teapot, I think I might even bought them on the same day and a dollar for this lantern at two different garage sales, um, was really a screaming deal. So anyway, again, any input you have on any of these kind of things, um, or even stories you want to tell of some great finds that you got at garage sales for like a really great deal, some really awesome antique stuff that you know is worth a lot more than you paid, go ahead and share those below. I'd really like to read about that. And then just as a side note, um, this has nothing to do with anything antique. Other than the fact that this is aged, I just got this bottled up. This is my um, calendula sage vinegar that I made for washing my hair. And I just really like the way the color turned out. So those people out there that have been interested in my vinegar making, it's been a while since I've done a vinegar related video. So I thought you might like to see that. Um, it was one of the last vinegars I made this year because the calendula and the sage were the last things that were growing. And I know those are both really good for the hair and the skin. So that's why I made the vinegar out of that. So this is, uh, this is what I'll be washing my hair with next. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something new. And I'll be looking forward to your replies on this. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.